Day four, you know, it was okay, but you don't know what you got in store, baby. You gotta face the guard of war. And get ready, baby. Fire in the house. Recently leaked footage of a sparring session between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson has surfaced intensifying the interest surrounding their potential matchup. The upcoming showdown between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul has electrified the boxing world, capturing the undivided attention of enthusiasts. Anticipation is mounting, with even Roy Jones Jr., who engaged Tyson in an exhibition match back in November 2020, stepping forward to offer his insights on the potential outcome of this eagerly awaited bout. What's happening? <clears throat> this is your boy Roy Jones Jr. Yeah, about the Jake Paul Tyson fight. The Jake Paul Tyson fight, you know, it's not an exhibition that I heard it's been upgraded to a fight. If it's a fight, it's very intriguing how it may turn out because Jake Paul has gotten a lot better with his boxing over the days, but Mike Tyson, even at 57, 58, however old he is, he's still Mike Tyson. When I boxed him in 21, he still punched like Mike Tyson. If he hits anybody square on the chin, it's gonna be problematic. I don't care who it is. So I like Jake Paul, he's a good guy. I think he's doing good with his boxing stuff. I think it's a great promotional situation for him and Mike. Um, they should do really good numbers, especially having it upgraded to a real fight. But if Mike comes out and beats Mike like Mike normally does, it's gonna be pretty tough for Jake. Now if Jake stay away from him about four or five rounds, then Jake has a chance. But you gotta do a lot of maneuvering to stay away from him. So yeah, that's my take. Thank you. In addition, Jones Jr. acknowledged that the fight has been upgraded to a professional one, claiming it's very intriguing how it may turn out because Jake Paul has gotten a lot better as a boxer over the days. However, Captain Hook cautioned Paul about overlooking Tyson's power because of his age. Jones firmly believed that should Tyson land a solid blow on Paul's jaw, Paul wouldn't stand a chance against the raw might packed in Mike's punch. Even still, Jones Jr. has the perfect game plan ready for the problem child, stating, If Jake stays away from him for four or five rounds, then Jake has a chance. Jones emphasized that Paul would need to employ extensive tactics to execute this strategy and emerge victorious in the upcoming bout. Despite Jones Jr.'s endorsement of the fight, apprehensions have surfaced following a medical advisory issued to Tyson. Similarly, Shan Strickland held nothing back when assessing the fight between Tyson and Paul. Strickland called Paul a disgrace for fighting Tyson in a vicious rant. Asked about Tyson versus Paul, he replied, It's how old is Mike Tyson, Jake Paul. You are a disgrace of a man. You are the epitome of weakness. You are the scum of the earth. Moreover, Strickland said Paul made him disgusted as he kept on verbally destroying the boxer. He added, The fact that you even have a platform or anything of that nature is a slight on society. You truly make me thing disgusted. If I ever encounter you in real life, I hope that I just don't lose mine and go to prison. Similarly, UFC fighter Colby Covington appears unfazed by the spectacle, boldly dismissing Jake Paul's boxing endeavors with his outspoken remarks. Covington vehemently opposes the notion of Paul being a genuine boxer, denouncing Paul's boxing endeavors as nothing but a charade. Covington didn't hold back during a recent podcast, launching a verbal onslaught against the 27-year-old sensation. All of Jake Paul's accomplishments have been rigged. They've, they've set up the deck against him from the start. Look, he fought the shortest guy in the NBA to start his career against Nate Robinson. Yeah, Nate Robinson. He had like a 70-pound advantage. Everybody yeah. was like pissed. Like, this guy's 7 inches taller, 100 pounds bigger, and, and you're mm -hmm. picking on this little NBA player, and you think you're tough because of that? Yeah. That doesn't make you tough, dude, just because you're beating up little guys and being a bully. So. Jake Paul has competed in 10 boxing matches so far winning the majority of them except for one. However, Colby Covington was not impressed. He claimed that all of the problem child's fights until now have been rigged. The first fight, he, you could tell he was holding back. He dropped him out of the ring and he came back in and then you could tell Jake made a little signal to him and then he started going light and he didn't go hard. And then he only won a split decision that first fight. And then the, the second fight, look, there's like a little hand signal where yeah. he's like he's like this and, and Woodley puts his hand down and he knocks him. He even dismissed Paul's win over his former UFC rival Tyron Woodley saying Tyron Woodley was past his prime and he obviously took a dive. The first fight, you could tell he was holding back. 
he dropped him out of the ring and he came back in and you could tell Jake made a little signal to him and then he started going light. He did not go hard. In addition to his remarks, Covington also criticized Jake Paul's bout with Nate Diaz, suggesting that the fighter from Stockton mirrored Tyron Woodley's approach solely for financial gain. Dude, it's it's a freak show. 100%, I, I, I believe that every one of Jake Paul's fight is rigged. Even Nate Diaz? Even Nate Diaz. Same thing, he just wanted to take a dive for the money. He, his UFC career is over. He couldn't hack it in the UFC no more with us, you know, all-stars, so he had to go take a dive. Meanwhile, numerous individuals have voiced apprehension about Tyson's well-being, pondering whether the esteemed boxing icon will emerge unscathed from the encounter. Stephen Hughes, a senior lecturer in medicine at Anglia Ruskin University, explored the potential outcomes. He said, The immediate effects may be minimal. The boxer could simply recover. But on some occasions, the effects may be devastating. A subdural hematoma can occur in this condition. Shearing forces cause tearing of bridging veins between the brain and blood vessels within the brain coverings or meninges. Hughes's article delved deeply into the potential ramifications for Iron Mike in the event of sustaining significant physical harm during the altercation. The specialist highlighted the likelihood of Tyson recuperating from any potential injuries incurred during the skirmish, yet cautioned about the looming threat of enduring long-lasting damage. Uh, however, Mike Tyson's coach, Rafael Cordo, dismissed assertions that the match would be irresponsible. He said, I believe we don't have to be concerned about it. We're talking about a two-time world champion. The guy didn't have 20 fights in two years. He knows how to fight. He's fought against the best guys in the world. When he steps inside the ring, he knows what to do. It's not something new for Mike, and this fight is no different. On the other hand, Hughes elaborated on the risks of sustaining numerous head impacts, emphasizing the potential development of subdural hematoma. This condition could result in lasting consequences such as physical impairment and psychological stress. Hughes further emphasized the grave possibility of mortality under such circumstances. But Cordo added, he works hard every single day to go in there and try to knock Jake out from the beginning to the end. This is his style. Nobody has taught Mike Tyson how to fight. He's going to prove that in July. Cordo mentioned that Tyson trains hard every day with the goal of knocking out Jake from start to finish, highlighting that Tyson's fighting style is innate, and he intends to demonstrate this in July. He added, You can see fire in his eyes when he trains, and he will never give less than that. I truly believe it is going to be a great show. Mike is going to step into the ring as the old Mike Tyson, and he's going to try and knock out Jake from the beginning to the end. Tyson has commenced his training camp for the upcoming summer match, potentially set to take place in front of a crowd of 80,000 spectators. Cordo added, He's already in shape and we've started doing rounds. It's amazing to see him hitting mitts. Mike is a monster. I can guarantee Mike will touch Jake. And let's see how Jake reacts to that. Cordo expressed his belief that the match will be a great show, with Tyson entering the ring with the same vigor as in his prime, aiming to knock out Jake throughout the fight. He added, With all due respect, he's a good kid, but he hasn't faced anyone who is a legend in the sport. We are talking about one of the most popular people in the world. Meanwhile, we know that Mike Tyson's training videos stood out as a highlight amidst the criticism surrounding the anticipated bout. Tyson consistently uploaded his training sessions to his Instagram account for four consecutive days. However, UFC icon Chael Sonnen dismissed them as fraudulent in a recent video. This sentiment was echoed by current UFC bantamweight champion Aljamain Sterling, who delved into the Tyson vs. Paul fight in his latest YouTube upload. 
Sterling, known as Funk Master, thoroughly analyzed the situation and provided his perspective on the matter. Sterling voiced some skepticism about the genuineness of Tyson's training videos, yet opted not to deliver a definitive judgment on them. Unlike Sonnen, Sterling remarked, if you watch the quick little snippet, it's like Boo Boom if they're current videos, or if they're videos from a few years ago, I don't know. Tyson's training footage caused a frenzy among combat sports enthusiasts who were astonished by the raw power behind his punches at the age of 57. Many cautioned the problem child about the potential risk of his upcoming bout. However, the American gangster, Sonnen, clarified that the clips were from three years prior, captured during Tyson's preparation for his showdown with Roy Jones Jr. Fans are likely aware of Sonnen's penchant for disseminating pseudo-realistic information. With the exception of Sonnen, there are no other credible sources corroborating Sonnen's claim that Tyson's training videos were recorded three years ago. Nevertheless, Sonnen's assertions might instill doubt among fans regarding Tyson's abilities. But Tyson shares his recent videos, putting an end to Sonnen's speculation. Here is the latest video from Tyson. Yeah. Can't beat it. Keep that weight forward. In 2002, Lewis and Tyson finally clashed in the boxing ring as they neared the sunset of their illustrious careers. Yet, their encounter was not just a showdown, it was a culmination of a shared past filled with intrigue and rivalry. During an insightful conversation on the renowned Joe Rogan Experience podcast, ex-champion Lewis delved into the intricate dynamics of their intense rivalry. He began, I remember going to the Catskills. I won the World Junior Championships in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, and I remember the American team were like, oh, you never fought the best. They told me it was Mike Tyson and Cus D'Amato. Lewis explained that a young Tyson would show respect to Lewis and even gave the Brit a glimpse of his incredible boxing knowledge. He said, the first time Tyson actually met me, he was a really nice guy. He took me to his room and showed me some old flicks that I had never seen before of old-time fighters. He would tell me about each fighter. He studied them. This was where he got his style of fighting from. However, everything shifted for Lewis the moment he entered the boxing ring with a 17-year-old powerhouse known as Iron Mike. Lewis said, First day in the gym and when the bell went, he came across and he was trying to kill me. I tried the Muhammad Ali thing, obviously, and stayed away from his power. But the first day was really hectic, the second day was hectic, but actually on the last day I got the better of him. Meanwhile, in terms of training footage leaked recently, enthusiasts perceive a significant disparity. Even as Tyson nears the age of 58, the baddest man on the planet retains his formidable power and exceptional head movement. In the video circulating online, he relentlessly unleashed powerful blows on his coach during pad work, followed by a vigorous assault on the punching bag. Although Paul has shown considerable improvement in his technique and speed, the stark contrast between the two is undeniable, according to popular opinion. Check out this comparison video between the two fighters. Seeing this footage, fans have started to weigh in. One wrote, How is Mike so fast? And a second said, Mike Tyson, a 57-year-old man, is moving like a man in his 20s. This is a death sentence. A third commented, If this is a real fight and not just a publicity stunt, then Jake is a dead man. And another added, At 16, Paul was lip-syncing songs on YT. At 16, Tyson was destroying other boxers. If this were to be a real fight, Paul wouldn't stand a chance. I understand the headline might come off as a bit exaggerated, but let's address the elephant in the room. 
Unless there's some unexpected twist where Tyson decides to throw this match for a hefty sum, it's shaping up to be a rough night for Jake Paul. On the other hand, it appears that Jake Paul is on a mission to prove everyone wrong. He seems to be putting in all his efforts to defeat Tyson in their upcoming bout. There's new leaked footage of Jake training hard for the fight. Drama Alert recently tweeted saying, Jake Paul is practicing crawling out of the ring against Mike Tyson. Here is the complete footage. With that said, a significant part of Tyson's preparation seems to owe credit to Very Valley BJJJ, where Mayor James Keenan, the lead singer of Tool and a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, practices. According to Keenan, Tyson not only trained at their gym, but was also present when the renowned boxer initiated his training camp for the bout. Keenan expressed his excitement by sharing an image on his Instagram page along with a note. He posted, Honored to have Mike Tyson grace our small town academy, Very Valley BJJJ, his training camp for Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson began under our roof. Going to be bragging about that for a bit long after you all are tired of hearing about it? Deal with it. Despite it being Tyson's first fight in almost 20 years, he undeniably maintains remarkable fitness and appears capable of punching through a brick wall. His footwork remains impeccable. It's hard to fathom how someone with only 10 professional fights stands any chance against the formidable force that is Tyson. Talking about the upcoming fight, heavyweight icon Terrell Biggs said, No doubt Tyson had improved. In the amateurs, you're still green, and I was better than him at that time. Once he turned pro, he stayed at it, improved on the things he needed to improve on, and became the better fighter. He was in top form. Moreover, Biggs ultimately singled out Tyson as the most formidable fighter he had ever faced in the ring. He said, he was a big puncher, and I never felt punches harder. Everywhere he would land. Chael Sonnen views the upcoming match between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul as nothing more than a colossal prank. He said, I used to make so much money with Jake Paul. I used to make so much money with Mike Tyson. There are things within an industry that we would never reveal. You never expose the business. He holds the opinion that both Paul and Tyson hold respectable positions in society and should uphold that image. Sonnen argues that Tyson, being older, shouldn't venture back into the boxing ring. He said, It's becoming harder and harder because there are very few things that aren't exposed. If that comes out and it makes head waves, the balloon that is this fight just gets popped. The contentious bout has caused a split among individuals in the boxing community, with former lightweight unified champion Amir Khan being the most recent to weigh in on the issue. Speaking to Gambling Zone, the 37-year-old said, The fight between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, wow, no one would have ever expected a fight like that to be made. Mike Tyson is a legend of the game and not someone who you want to mess about with, even though he's older now and has been retired for a long time. He's obviously done a few exhibitions. Despite the criticism Paul has faced for challenging a nearly 60-year-old opponent while he's at the peak of his physical abilities, Khan has taken a different stance, issuing a harsh warning to the YouTube sensation. Khan explained, I just feel that he can really hurt Jake Paul. I just can't believe what Jake Paul's thinking. He's fighting a heavyweight great. And I think he can get hurt badly. Khan expressed concern that Paul could be significantly injured due to Tyson's heavyweight boxing expertise, questioning Paul's judgment in challenging such a formidable opponent. He found the situation almost surreal and expressed a hope that Tyson would not seriously injure Paul as he harbored a liking for Jake, yet emphasized the danger of facing Mike Tyson in the ring. Khan added, Is it just a hype with Mike and Jake posting it at the same time? This is unreal and I hope that Mike doesn't end up hurting him because at the end of the day I like Jake, but Mike is not a person you want to mess with. Francis Ngannou, the once reigning champion of the UFC's heavyweight division, has also weighed in with his perspective on the issue. He said, If it comes out to be a real fight, of course, I'll be there to support Mike. He's 57 years old, but he can still kick some oat. There's no doubt about it.
Regardless of the result, this event has already secured its place in the annals of sporting history, challenging perceptions, evoking debates and exemplifying the ever-evolving landscape of combat sports. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.